Hi guys, Rick Malava here. My nickname in the Simply Maya forums is CTV Ram, and uh, one of our users was asking how he could create uh, one of these support plates here for this uh, Gatlin gun type uh, uh, model that he's building here. I'm assuming it's a Gatlin gun. It looks like he's got 10 barrels going through these three support plates, and he wants to create the circular holes that go through the support plates here. So I'm going to show you one way that you can do that and create nice clean geometry with all quads. So uh, here's what we're shooting for. Uh, as you can see, I've got a plate here, and we got the 10 holes going through it. And with the exception of the triangles here at the center, it's an all-quad geometry. So uh, what I wanted to demonstrate here was, uh, was the fact that this cylinder, or this disc, has symmetry. So I really only have to model one of these little pie wedges here, and then I can just duplicate it nine times to create all the other uh, all the other wedges. So you can take something that looks like it would be tedious to model uh, and you can uh, do it very quickly if you use symmetry. So uh, I've got this on a layer so I'm going to hide it and just kind of show you the process that I went through to build it. So we want 10 holes so I'm going to start out with a polygon cylinder right here and I am going to put uh, 20 subdivisions in this. I want 10 holes and I want an edge going through the center of each of the holes. So that means I need uh, two faces to work with for each hole, times 10 is 20 holes. Uh, the other thing is I want to have a face at the uh, sort of at the bottom of the hole too, so that I can have, uh, uh, in the end, I can have eight faces going all the way around, or eight edges going around the hole. So I need an edge going sort of through the center of the hole around the disc, and then an edge at the bottom of the hole. So I can do that in the creation node here by coming down to subdivision caps, and I can add, uh, let's say, uh, four subdivision caps. So now I've got a hole that I'm going to put in this region right here, with the center of the hole right here. And then if I count the edges around the hole, you'll see there's eight. There's two, four, six, and eight. So from a top view, I can come in here, and since I have eight edges going around, I'm going to create another cylinder, polygon cylinder, right here. Right, I'll turn wireframe on so you can see that. Give it a little thickness, and then come over here and make that eight sides. Okay, and then... Uh, just kind of zoom in here close and just eyeball it. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it close. Okay, so there's our hole going in that in that segment. Now, in, uh, now what I can do is I can I can cut. I can come in here to one of this these faces here, and I can use the split polygon tool, and I can use this as a guide. But I'm going to show you a quick way to do this using uh, using booleans here. So I'm going to pull this guy up. And then I'm going to grab all of these verts down here, and I'm just going to pull it through the model, through that disk. And I'm going to come here, turn this off, and go back to shaded view. And if I took this disk and I subtract away that disk by holding shift, right mouse button, boolean difference, you see I get the hole cut into this surface for me. Now, um, I don't need the whole disk, I just needed it in order for that boolean to work properly, so uh, all I really want is the top face for the rest of this to uh, work out the rest of the geometry. So I'm going to delete all of those faces. And uh, because this has symmetry, I only need one of these wedges. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get rid of all of uh, uh, all of these faces. Right, and I can take... Uh, Oops. Right. And I can get rid of all those faces. So all you need is this one wedge now. Okay. So uh, you'll notice that I still have a little messiness here. If I come down here, for instance, and I select those verts, you see I have two verts selected. So even though I was kind of close to the center, I wasn't quite right on center. So I'm going to grab these verts up here and these verts down here. And it says, you can see up here in my heads up display that I have four verts. So I'm going to go to holding the shift right mouse button, come up here to merge and merge verts, and you'll see that count goes to two. So now those guys are merged properly. The other problem is I have a vert here, and I have this corner vert that I want it really to be merged to. So I'm going to take this vert, shift right mouse button, merge vertex, and come to the merge vertex tool. And then I can take and 
holding the uh, left mouse button I can select a vert and then move it over to the vert that I want to merge it to and it'll snap it up to it. So we still don't have quads here. We've got all of the we've got the side verts and the top verts and bottom verts connected, but we don't have these ones at the corners connected to anything yet. So I'm going to come up here to my split polygon tool and I'm just going to draw manually draw edges. Now this is the old split polygon tool. If you have the new version of Maya or later versions of Maya, uh, they they kind of hid this. If this ever happens where it doesn't slide properly, just hit the delete key. Um, you can actually get this old version of the split polygon tool back by typing uh, uh, split polygon tool down here. It's lowercase split, then uppercase polygon and then uppercase T tool and that will bring up the uh, the old split polygon tool which it did not so let me check to make sure that I have that correct let's go to the shelf editor and see what my command for that actually is subdivision mark and hide edge split polygon oh it's it's all capitals for the start of each each word so it's capital split so if I come down here and make that a capital S. So split polygon tool. And if I hit return, that brings the split polygon tool up and then I can get the old tool. I, you can use the new tool, the interactive split polygon tool. I just, I'm more comfortable with this one. So that's why I use it. So boom. And now what you can see is as far as all of the uh, faces that go around this this uh, eight-sided hole here, there's they're all quads. This is a quad, 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 four sides, four sides, four sides, which is good. In fact, the only thing that's not four-sided in this wedge is are these two triangles down here, and we can fix that by simply selecting this edge and deleting it. Okay, so now this is a uh, completely quad structure. So I'm getting some history built up over here, so I'm just going to delete that real fast. And uh, since I'm going to need some support edges when I add thickness to this, I might as well do it now because I'm going to make duplicates of this. So if I pick this edge and just do fill hole, and then pick this face, and then uh, do an extrude on that face, and just give it a little bit of thickness there, and then delete that face, I've added that support edge going all the, right, all the way around that circle. So when I smooth it, I'm going to get a circle with a support edge all the way around it. Now the only thing that's left to do is to make this back into a whole disk. So I can select this guy right here, and if I hit the W key, you'll see that it's uh, uh, coordinate is not where we need it to be. So I'm going to uh, take it and hit the insert key, and I'm going to hold the V key down in middle mouse gesture over this point right here to move the... Uh, uh, the coordinate system for this for this uh, thing right at this point here and so now if I hit the shift D key to duplicate this and then hit the R key or the E key I'm sorry to rotate it and I rotate this guy 36 degrees or negative 36 degrees minus 36 um, I get something really wackoid I guess uh, it helps to look what I'm typing. I typed in minus 39, so minus 36. That's better. And now if I hit shift, let's see if this will work, shift D again. Yeah, uh, every time I hit shift D, it will repeat that last command. I wasn't sure if it would do it since I had to go back and do it twice. But basically I just duplicated it, rotated it 36 degrees, and then just kept hitting shift D to repeat the last command. So I created 10 copies all the way around. All right, so I hit the Q key to drop that tool, and now the problem is there's 10 separate uh, uh, objects here. So what I want to do is hit the Shift and then the right mouse button and combine this geometry into a single object, and then I need to merge all the vertices along all of these edges here. So to do that, uh, once again, I'm going to go to Vertex Mode, select all the vertices, and then go to Merge Vertex and Merge Vertex like that. And so now this is uh, one piece of geometry with all the vertexes merged. Just kind of come in here and make sure that you didn't merge any vertexes uh, where we put those support edges in. If they were close enough together, they'll merge if your tolerances are high enough. So now all that's left is to give this thing some thickness and then to smooth it, and we'll be all done. So 
uh, what I can do is pick this piece here. I can go to Edit Mesh Extrude and then click that little button there to go to the global coordinate system and give it a little thickness. Once again, remembering we just need a little thickness to uh, add a support edge uh, in there. So a little thickness like that. And then I'm going to come in here and uh, hit the G key to repeat that last command and give it some more thickness. And then hit the G key again to add a support edge down at the other end, just like that. And now if I come back to object mode and I smooth it, there you go. We have the disk with some thickness, with 10 holes going all the way around, with proper quad geometry throughout the whole, whole model. And the only thing left to do, if you notice, is I have a support edge along the outside here, but I don't have a support edge coming in here and because this edge, the distance between this edge and these edges is kind of varying. Um, it doesn't look bad, but this this radius isn't consistent all the way around here. So if you really want it to be precise, you can come in here and select this face, double click that face, and then hit the shift greater than to expand your selection, and then go to extrude, find the little blue arrow, and just pull this out a little bit. And now you'll notice that I have, uh, coming around this corner, I have three edges, and coming around this bottom edge, I have three edges, and so that's going to hold the tightness very consistently around the whole disk. And there you go. There's a disk with 10 holes in it with nice clean quad geometry. So I hope this helps you out. Uh, my name once again is Rich Malava and my nickname in the forums is uh, CTB Ram. And I hope this helps you out with uh, modeling of your Gatling gun. If you have any other questions, don't uh, hesitate to ask in the forums.